Welcome to ACAPS NPM Analysis Hub second audio discussion. Last time we spoke about understanding the household characteristic of vulnerability. Today we'll be talking about age and disability in the Rohingya response based on our secondary data review called Considering Age and Disability in the Rohingya Response published in February 2021. This audio discussion is part of ACAP's pilot project adapting written reports to audio to make our analysis more accessible to people who don't have time to read tax-heavy reports. ACAPS is an independent non-governmental project that provides global and crisis level analysis. The ACAPS NPM Analysis Hub was established in Bangladesh in 2017 and is hosted by IOM's Needs and Population Monitoring Unit, NPM. The hub supports the overall Rohingya response through assessment and analysis and conducts independent analysis to encourage evidence-based decision-making. I am Federica and I'll be discussing the report and its findings with my ACAPS colleagues Lamia and Kushbo. For persons with disabilities and older people, life in a refugee camp is even more of a struggle than for the general population. We will be looking at the particular challenges and constraints faced by these groups in accessing essential services, how COVID-19 measures have exacerbated these challenges and what information is still needed to adapt the response to these groups. But before examining the experiences of people with disabilities and older people in the camps, Lamia, I want to know how do the Rohingya in general view disability? Thanks, Federica. The Rohingya frequently refer to possession by spirits, which they call jinn, and supernatural entities when talking about disability. This is how they explain mental health conditions certain illnesses, diseases, and physical disabilities. Often, having a child with disabilities is considered to be a karmic consequence for the parents. If a child is born with a disability, families often consult traditional healers and religious leaders before, or instead of, medical professionals. Discussing mental health or intellectual disabilities is difficult for and with the Rohingya because there is limited vocabulary to refer appropriately to various intellectual and developmental disabilities and mental health conditions. It is, though, easier for the Rohingya to discuss physical disabilities. But like people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, people with physical disabilities also face discrimination and exclusion because of the social stigma attached to disabilities in the Rohingya community. And do we know how many disabled people there are in the camps and the types of disabilities people have? Unfortunately, Federica, no. There's no widely accepted figure of disability prevalence among Rohingya refugees. Depending on the assessment, it's estimated that anywhere between 3 to 15% of households have a member with a disability. The varying percentages are likely because separate quantitative data collection exercises use different methodologies in assessments. Often, different questionnaires are used even between different rounds of the same assessment type. Questionnaire design also impacts the way questions are interpreted and answered. For example, many assessments use wording like household members aged 5 and above requiring assistance with daily tasks, which combines different population groups such as people with disabilities, people with chronic illnesses, and older people. Because of this, even in our own report, we found it difficult to assess the needs of people with disabilities and older people separately. Another factor accounting for the different estimates of disability prevalence is that the family members participating in the assessments may be hesitant to discuss disabilities within their household due to social stigma. And apart from social stigma, 
What are the main challenges facing people with disabilities and older people living in the Rohingya refugee camps? Well, there are many challenges related to lack of adapted infrastructure, access and physical distance from essential services, communication and information, and social inclusion and protection. In the camps, the main factor in people being able to reach essential services is accessibility. The lack of suitable infrastructure in the camps means that persons with disabilities and older people struggle to move easily, both inside and outside their shelters. They face barriers accessing both distribution points for essential food and other items and also healthcare facilities. And what are some of the other restrictions to moving about easily? Well, it's common to have steps at the entrances of shelters and other buildings. Inside the shelters, the floors are typically lined with natural earth and mats and are as uneven as the terrain outside. As a result, people with assistive devices have difficulty moving across the uneven ground inside their homes, in the congested camps, and through narrow entranceways. Sleeping on the floor is also common, and this is difficult for people with some types of physical disabilities and older people. Just getting down on the floor to sit or sleep and back up again can be a problem. And when do they go outside and try to reach facilities? What are the problems they face there? At the water points, the hand pumps can be difficult to use. Hand pumps were found to be very labor intensive especially if not built with extended handles. For some disabled and older people, the design of the washer containers matter. Buckets and aluminium pitchers are difficult to use, but narrow jerry cans with thinner handles on top are easier and can be carried while using a crutch or other mobility device. And when it comes to latrines, they need to be disability friendly. This means wide, barrier-free entrances with ramps and accessible light switches, accessible handles and handrails, and enough space to accommodate assistive devices such as wheelchairs and to enable caregivers to help with personal care. Thanks, Lamia. So these are just some of the problems that face people when the infrastructure hasn't been adapted to meet their needs. Can you explain more about issues related to access to and physical distance from essential services? Basically, there is a high reliance on both food and non-food distribution in the camps. Because of this, equal access to distribution sites is essential, but many distribution points are not appropriately adapted to the needs of older people and persons with disabilities. Some of the barriers reported by the general Rohingya population are even more of a problem for those who are older or have disabilities. They often find it difficult to carry water, heavy staple foods such as rice and pulses, and other relief items. This is compounded by the difficult terrain and the distribution points being located too far away for people with disabilities and older people to reach on their own. So. Older people and persons with disabilities need extra support to access distribution points. Distributions during COVID-19 were also heavier and only one person could collect assistance on behalf of their households, making it even harder to carry. There is a free porter service available to people with disabilities and older people who are the head of their household but our research suggests that the service does not reach everyone and may incur additional charges or risks like people running away with the assistance. Also, during the monsoon season, heavy rains, landslides and flooding impact the ability of households to travel within and between camps to pick up assistance safely. Accessing healthcare is also challenging for people with disabilities and older people because of the lack of physically accessible or adapted healthcare facilities, which has been further impacted because of the pandemic-related restrictions. The physical support provided to people with disabilities stopped at the height of the COVID-19-related restrictions. Older people and persons with disabilities 
are more likely to struggle with mental health issues because movement restrictions have worsened their isolation. Interesting. We'll go on to look at the additional impact that COVID-19 restrictions have had later. You mentioned factors related to communication and access to information that also contribute to challenges faced by people with disabilities and older people. What are these problems? I know we'll be talking more about the impact of COVID-19 later, but the pandemic only highlighted how important it is that information is communicated to everybody in the camps appropriately. People who have difficulty communicating may not understand messages about preventative hygiene and social measures if communication tools are not adapted. People with hearing disabilities who were used to lip reading struggled with face-to-face -face communication because of the wearing of masks. A lot of messaging in the camps is also done through microphones, tom-toms, information boards, and posters. Information shared this way only reaches people with access to public spaces. Those who cannot access these spaces easily, including persons with disabilities and older people, are left out. Thank you. I wouldn't have thought of some of those things. Can you explain more about the social inclusion and protection challenges faced by persons with disabilities and older people? The Rohingya are exposed to many risks, like sexual and gender-based violence, psychological trauma, human trafficking, and child labor and marriage. Many of these risks were heightened by the containment and risk mitigation measures put in place during the pandemic and by the subsequent suspension of protection services in the camps, which negatively affected humanitarian access. There was an increase in reports of tension and violence against women within households. This is probably because confined living conditions and stress from a sudden loss of income resulted in increased tensions within households, between Rohingya communities, and between the Rohingya and the host community. The existing social and economic disadvantages in the camps are also a compounding factor for existing vulnerabilities. Persons with disabilities and older people are especially vulnerable and their safety and protection requires additional considerations. For example, globally, girls and young women with disabilities are 10 times more likely to experience gender-based violence than those without disabilities. This means Rohingya girls and women with disabilities already living in dangerous conditions are even more vulnerable to gender-based violence. Community participation plays a large role in protection. However, persons with disabilities and older people tend to face barriers taking part in the community life. Both people with physical disabilities and older people expressed feeling rejected and sad because of their physical isolation and limited interaction with the community. Because of social stigma and the logistical burdens and costs related to sending children with disabilities to learning facilities and the economic impacts of COVID-19, parents are more likely to withdraw children with disabilities from education than their peers. This further isolates them from their peers. This lack of social inclusion for people with disabilities has been identified as a possible risk factor for young people and children with disabilities being trafficked either for sexual or other forced labor. So with Lamia, we've looked at some of the main challenges facing persons with disabilities and older people living in the Rohingya refugee camps. Our colleague Kushbu will explain more on how different vulnerabilities based on age, gender and other factors can impact or interact with disabilities. Thank you. As you said, persons with disabilities and older people can experience multiple vulnerabilities simultaneously. In the Rohingya context, children, adolescents, adult women 
and older persons with disabilities are all at higher risk of being excluded from humanitarian assistance than disabled men of working age. Households with persons with disabilities or with members who have additional needs, such as chronic illnesses, may also face compounding vulnerabilities. Like we discussed in our last audio report, these households generally incur higher costs because of the additional medical expenses and the pandemic made overall vulnerability within the camps worse. As we saw in our last report, Rohingya female-headed households are already more vulnerable than their peers because of the combination of social cultural norms. The governance structure within the camps, safety and security issues, gender-based violence, and a lack of gender-responsive facilities. How do these vulnerabilities interact with the experience of disability? Understanding how gender and disability interact is key when designing research analysis or accessible interventions. And just like the total number of persons with disabilities, the number of women and girls with disabilities in the camps is likely being underreported. The barriers to adequate representation for women and girls can be worsened by disability. And the social barriers that impact female mobility amongst the Rohingya are also the social and physical barriers that are commonly faced by persons with disabilities and older people. These issues combined with the current aid delivery methods make accessing assistance and services even more challenging for female-headed households with disabled members or households headed by women with disabilities. As a result, existing vulnerabilities with regards to food security, economic status and protection is worsened. And we have mentioned it before, but how have the risks and impact of COVID-19 restrictions affected older people and especially older people with disabilities? Older people and persons with disabilities are at greater risk of requiring hospitalization or dying if they contract COVID-19. Older persons with disabilities were already more likely to experience difficulties accessing humanitarian assistance than other persons with disabilities or the general population. The movement restrictions put in place because of the pandemic further negatively impacted their access to services. A survey conducted by Help Age International across five camps in May 2020 found that 81% of 121 people over the age of 60 had reduced the amount of food they consumed because of COVID-19. This was attributed to factors such as loss of household income and an inability to collect assistance independently. 27% of these older people also reported being unable to maintain distance from others, rendering them more vulnerable to contracting the virus and 31% said they were unable to wash their hands properly, which can be linked to forgetfulness due to dementia or not fully understanding COVID-19 messaging. So what do you think could bring about an improvement in conditions for persons with disabilities and older people in the camps? First, it is important to understand the barriers persons with disabilities and older people faced even prior to the pandemic. We need to acknowledge that disability is often stigmatized and disabilities hidden or misunderstood among the Rohingya. This affects the participation of older people and persons with disabilities in decision-making, community life and access to essential services. The lack of response level baseline data about disability, age and sex impacts the ability of the humanitarian response to appropriately support households with older people and persons with disabilities. Accessibility is a precondition to meaningful participation in and access to services for people with disabilities and older people. This means considering accessibility in all aspects of humanitarian interventions. Humanitarians need to plan adjustments to ensure equal access in transportation, sign language interpretation and the distribution and use of assistive devices, among other things. 
proper and consistent monitoring by humanitarians of the engagement and participation of persons with disabilities throughout the lifespan of their projects will also increase understanding on participation gaps and will allow humanitarians to address these gaps. Lastly, I would like to add that post-distribution of our report, we realized that the language used to address the community of persons with disabilities has not been standardized within the response and varies between organizations and reports. Therefore, gaps remain in our understanding of how to appropriately address persons with disabilities considering their preferences. Thanks again, Kushbu and Lamia, for the discussion today. The full report called Considering Age and Disability in the Rohingya Response is available on the ACAPS website. The report includes all our sources, our methodology, and the limitation of our analysis. Please visit www.acaps.org for more information and to sign up to the ACAPS Bangladesh mailing list to receive our report directly into your inbox. We will be sharing a short post-pilot survey with the response. It would be very helpful if you, as a listener, were to fill it in. But if you would like to provide any feedback before the survey is distributed, please contact Xiomara at xhc.acaps.org. Thank you for listening.